Hello again, Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today, I thought we would talk about a real millinery technique called blocking. What is blocking? Blocking is shaping a hat over a form. Now, have a look at the hat that I'm wearing today. This is a felt hat that was shaped over a form. Let me take it off. It's held on my head with a hat pin because I have long hair. But as you will see, it's a rounded form. I put a little piece of fabric on it and frayed it to give it a little interest and a feather. I'm going to focus the camera on the table now and show you what this was formed on. So bear with me. Now hat blocks are probably one of the most expensive pieces of equipment you use in millinery. I don't have a lot, but I have a number of useful ones. The hat that I showed you before, this one, was blocked on this wooden block. It's a vintage piece. It's what's called a five-piece block, which means you shape the felt over the form. There are ridges on here where you tie with a blocking cord. And when the felt is dry, you take it off, but you don't want to distort the hat. So the, blo the block is formed so that you can turn it upside down and pull the inside out and the rest of the block comes apart like this. So you don't ruin the shape of your hat. Now these are treasures, these five piece hat blocks. So if you ever see one in a thrift store, grab one if you can. This is old and a little, a little out of shape because some of the wood has swollen or shrunk. I want to show you another one though. It's quite interesting. This was a find. This little uh, turban block. It's a very small size, too small for my head. But in the spring, I was curating a hat exhibit for Arlington County um, Public Affairs, uh, Cultural Affairs Office. And I wanted to show this block with a hat that was formed on it to explain how hats are made on blocks. This, as you will see, is a straw that I wet and shaped over the block and then draped fabric over it to make the hat. So that's sort of how it's done. I'll show you a couple more. This is a block that I had made. <clears throat> I had a, a, a hat shape that I liked and I sent it to the block maker and he made this up for me. And this, <clears throat> this is a hat that was made on this block. Now, this is a very old hat. It's shrunk a little bit and there's, there's a wire inside and it's been turned under so it doesn't fit right over this anymore. But <clears throat> you will see the form of the felt takes the shape of the block underneath. Now this I call my little chocolate cake hat. I wanted to make a hat out of this little piece of brown felt that I had and I have this wonderful vintage nylon ribbon which was kind of flimsy and floppy so I pleated it like this and when it was done I thought well it looks kind of like one of those ganache chocolate cakes so this hat though was not done on a formal hat block I found a salad bowl that was the shape I needed covered it with plastic so that it wouldn't my felt wouldn't stick to the block and that's how this one was made You've seen in some of my other videos, my Ikea glass bowl, which is also how I have shaped a number of my hats. This little felt hat was done on this bowl. You see, the felt was folded over the edge of the bowl, clipped down, and when it dried, I was able to stitch, trim on there. I just had to adjust this because one of the things you have to be careful about when you're doing a, a block like this is when you put your wire in your edge. Um, I got a little too much wire in there and it flattened out my hat. So recently I had to undo the stitching in the back, shorten the wire and pull it together so that it would go back to its original shape. So that's just one of the tricks. Get rid of this. Now, what do you use? Oh, I want to show you another block before we go any further. 
This is a hat that I made on a two piece, two, two different clocks. This is felt with some little felt balls on the inside, matches my winter coat. And <clears throat> the brim was blocked on a, a block like this. Now, normally this would have a crown block that would go with pegs into the top and you could either block the whole hat together or you can block it in two pieces and sew it together. What I did, I made a little block. I made a buckram form and then covered it with plaster, covered it over with foil, and I laid it on top. So that's how I made that block, that hat. You see it has a rounded crown rather than... So, if you don't have it, make it. Let's talk a little bit about felt. Now, that's, there are several hats I have here to show you. This is a hat that I made, sort of free form, on a head block. That's the other kind of block, you, and probably the first block you should buy is a head block because it's the most useful of all. But this hat, I freeform shaped on the head block with a hat that I found on sale at, I, at uh, Target. At the end of the season, in the early spring, a lot of the winter hats go on sale and they're very cheap. So if you're just learning and you don't want to invest in an expensive, beautiful velour felt, you can sometimes find a vintage piece at a thrift store or at a Target or a less expensive store and you, what you want to do is look for a hat that doesn't have trim glued on it. You want hats that have trim stitched on. So you can take all the stitching and the ribbons and whatever out of it and you steam it. And this, this hat began as this. So you see, you can really transform it. It's not the best quality felt because it was a Target hat. But it's 100% wool. That's what you want. 100% wool or 100% fur felt. And... Uh, You've got something to work with and I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute. So here's the head block. Here are a couple of other felts. This one I wanted to show you because this is a really lovely um, fur felt. I believe it comes from the Czech Republic and still has the uh, label in it and it's a very soft, very fine felt. Quite a difference between that and this one. You can just tell by the feel and the texture. So that's something to watch for when you're shopping. But nowadays, you can buy hat blocks, hat bodies. This is a capeline, but you can also get them in what's called a hood. This shape is called a hood or a body. But anyway, um, you can buy, this is a velour felt, and it's called velour because there's a, there's a special treatment done to the outside of it to give it a nice velvety texture. But you can get wool felts and velour felts from any millinery supplier still today. Look for wool or fur felts because those are the best. Now, I decided to sh get us started just so you can see how it works. We'll see where we're, where we're going. If you don't have a hat block, but you have a head block, you can still do freeform work like I did with that hat, or you can do a cloche. So I thought today, we try to do a sort of 1920s cloche style, which is kind of making a comeback these days. Cloches came into popularity in the 1920s when women started bobbing their hair, cutting it off. Don't go there. Sorry. And uh, so what I've done is I've taken my velour felt capeline and I sprayed it with water earlier today so that the water could soak in because it's, it's, it's water or steam that will make this work for you. Felt is just animal hair that clings, the various hairs cling to each other with barbs and that's what makes felt. If you've ever, you should take a look at some um, YouTube videos on how to make felt and you'll understand how it works. What I'm going to do here, is steam this wet felt a bit 
and see if I can get it going. <clears throat> when I was in millinery school in New York, we had a steaming tent in the middle of our work tables. And we would put our hats, with the, even with the blocks sometimes, all the way into the steam tent. The hotter and wetter the felt is, the more easy it is to manipulate. But I don't have a steam tent here, so I've sprayed it with water and I'm just going to steam it nicely. Take the little dog hair off there. You can also dunk your felt into a tub of water. It'll just take you a lot longer for the felt to dry. But just to get you started, I want to show you how magical this is. Traditionally in the millinery business, men are generally the blockers because they have more upper body strength than most women. I don't know that that's true today, but when they were manufacturing hundreds of hats in the millinery district in the olden days, that's the way it worked. They were probably paid more too, who knows. But as you see, as I steam it and pull it down, it begins to take the form of the block that it's on. And I'm going to steam it directly on that top button where I'm trying to get it to smooth out nicely. It's really magical. When I was teaching millinery at Houston Community College, I had to hold off on teaching felt blocking because if I did it early in the course, that's all people wanted to do. It is so much fun. I don't have any particular plan for this hat. So we're going to see what happens with the steam and the pulling and the shape of the felt. Now some of the tools you need when blocking are pins. These are millinery push pins. They're 5 8 inch so you can stick them into the uh, wooden block. Now if you're using a glass block obviously you can't do that so you have to improvise. I'm smoothing and pinning as I go. You want to keep going back to the steam because the steam helps you. Now what I want to do is pull this up a little bit so that the face will show. and then maybe create a little bit of a brim. We'll cut off the excess and use the excess for hat trim. Now on a hat block you would use cord and work the cord into the ridges on the hat block to help it hold it in place. But since I'm working on a head block here, I'm not going to do that. I'm using my thumbs to shape. When I started out in millinery, I used to use a tea kettle because I didn't have a steamer. Then I got myself a professional steamer, which is very good, but it's large and kind of heavy. This little handheld clothing steamer works pretty well on a demonstration project like this. Now, you see this this is not working too well so I need to reshape that part. Back to the steamer. Nice and smooth. Now, the last part of the process, you want to work on the nap 
of the felt. And for that, you use a brush. I start in one direction and just go in the same direction all the way around the hat. That ensures that the nap looks pretty. Smoothing out, again going back to the steam. Now this is a neat trick to know because when you buy a hat in a thrift store, if it's a good quality felt and doesn't have any glue on it, you can completely reshape that hat to a new shape, just like we're doing here. It's magical. Well, now I'm going to turn up the front to create a bit of a brim. Maybe make it a little of a diagonal. Again, don't forget to go back to the steam. The mistake a lot of my students make is that they, they forget about going back to the steam and they try to shape cold felt. Doesn't work all that well that way. Here we go. You see how nicely it pulls? I'm going to let this let this cloche dry on the block and we'll finish in another video. But meanwhile, get out there and make some hats. Wear some hats. Have some fun. After all, why not a hat?